the exercise for bases and dimension. W1 be a subspace of three dimensional vector space generated by these three vectors and W2 be the surface of three dimensional vector space of all vectors of the kind A0, B for all A, B belonging to the real numbers. So we need to find the basis and dimension of W1, W2, their sum and their intersection, right? So let's find out the basis for W1 first that is generated by these three vectors. For that, we need to write these vectors in a matrix form first. And now I need to change this matrix in a row echelon form or echelon form, right? Okay. I'm having negative 1 to be the leading entry for the first row. What is the leading entry? It is the first non-zero element present in the row. So for the row 1, negative 1 is the leading entry, right? And I need to make this entry to be as 1 first. So for that, just multiply the row 1 with negative 1. So applying the row operation, row 1 is multiplied with negative 1. So now I'm getting 1 to be the leading entry for the first row. And the next step is to make all these two entries to be 0. To get 0 in place of 2, always make use of the row having the leading entry, right? So I'm multiplying the row 1 with negative 2 and adding its elements to the row 2. So changing the row 2 by adding its elements to the row 1, but row 1 should be first multiplied with negative 2. And now to get 0 in place of negative 8, for that we multiply the row 1 with 8 and adding its elements to the row 3. So we are getting 1 to be the leading entry for the first row. And below this entry, all other entries are 0. Now moving on to the leading entry of the row 2, that is 4. And I need to make this 4 as 1. For that, just multiply the second row with 1 divided by 4. And now writing the last row as it is. So now we are getting 1 to be the leading entry for the second row. We are interested to make this entry to be 0 first. For that, multiplying the row 2 with 12 and adding its elements to the third row. If possible, make this entry also to be as 0, but when applying the operations, the leading entry should not get disturbed, right? So to make minus 2 as 0, I am again making the use of the row 2 by multiplying its elements with 2 and adding this to the first row. So I need to change the row 1 by adding its elements to the row 2, but row 2 should be first multiplied with 2. So writing second and third row as it is, I'm changing the row 1. So this is your matrix in an echelon form, right? This matrix is also equivalent to the matrix if you manage 1 half and 3 by 4, 2, 0, 1, 0, 4, 3, 0, 0, 0. And now I'm getting two non-zero rows at the top. So the bases of W1 are, let B1 be the basis for W1. So therefore, B1 is equal to vectors 2, 0, 1 and 0, 4, 3. And the dimension of W1 equal to how many number of elements present in the bases? It is 2. Now moving on to the next part. The subspace W2 is of the kind having the vectors A, 0, B, where A and B are belonging to the real numbers, right? First, we need to get the vectors that generates W2, right? So, to get those vectors, let's take one element from W2. Let this element A, 0, B belongs to W2, right? Any element belonging to the subspace can be written as the linear combinations of it can be written as A00 plus 00B. When you add these two, you get this, right? That can be further written as A into 100 plus B into 001. So the element of W2 is a linear combination of 100 and 001, right? So therefore, A0B is a linear combination of 100 and 001. But A0B is arbitrary, right? It is any element present in W2. So this implies every element of the subspace W2 is a linear combination of these two vectors. That means these two vectors generates W2, right? Therefore, every element of W2 
is a linear combination of 1, 0, 0 and 0, 0, 1. So thus, W2 is generated by 1, 0, 0 and 0, 0, 1. Now to get the basis of W2, let's write these vectors in a matrix form first. Now the leading entry of the first row is already 1 and also having 0 below this leading entry. And the leading entry for the second row is also 1 having the 0 element above it. So this A matrix is already in a row echelon form. Therefore, the basis B2 for the subspace W2 is equal to, yes, 1, 0, 0 and 0, 0, 1. And the dimension of subspace W2 is equal to the number of elements present in the basis, that is 2. Next, we need to find the dimension for the sum of the subspaces. Now since W1 is generated by these three vectors, W2 is generated by these two vectors, right? So their sum is generated by all these five vectors. So first we need to write these vectors in a matrix form. And to get the basis for sum of the subspaces, we need to get the matrix in a row echelon form or echelon form, right? Now for the first row, I'm having the leading entry as negative 1. I need to make this as 1 first. We can interchange the row 1 with row 4. Now I am having the leading entry as 1 in the first row. Right? Next step is to get 0 in place of 2, negative 8 and negative 1. Always make use of the row having the leading entry. Right? To get 0 in place of 2, just multiply the row 1 with negative 2 and adding its elements to the row 2. So I need to change the row 2 by adding its elements to the row 1 but row 1 should be first multiplied with negative 2. Now to get 0 in place of negative 8, we multiply the row 1 with 8 and adding its elements to the row 3. To get 0 in place of negative 1, we multiply the row 1 with 1 and adding its elements to the row 4. And writing the last row as it is. So I'm having the leading entry as 1 in the first row and rest of the entries are 0, 0, 0, right? And now for the second row, I'm having the leading entry as 1. I need to make all these entries to be 0 now, right? Again, I'm recalling you that the leading entry is the first non-zero entry of the row. So for the row 2, I'm having the leading entry as 1, right? Now to get 0 in place of negative 1. So multiplying the elements of the second row by 1 and adding its elements to the row 2. To get 0 in place of 1, we multiply the row 2 with negative 1 and adding its elements to the row 4. And same operation for the row 5 also. So I'm getting 1 to be the leading entry for the row 2 and having rest of the elements to be as 0. Now for the third row, I'm having the leading entry as 4. I need to make this as 1. So for that, just multiply the third row with 1 by 4. So I'm getting 1 to be the leading entry for the third row. And at last, we need 0 in place of 2. So for that, just multiply the row 3 with negative 2 and adding its elements to the row 4. To have a beautiful form, just interchange the row 2 and 3 so that I can get 1 in between. Very fine. So this is your echelon matrix. And the number of non-zero rows are at the top. So therefore, the basis for sum of the subspaces is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. Again, the standard basis. So the dimension of W1 plus W2 is equal to the number of the elements present in the basis that is equal to 3. Next, to get the dimension for the intersection of the subspaces, a very well-known result is that the dimension of the sum of the subspaces is equal to the dimension of W1 plus dimension of W2 minus the dimension of the intersection of the subspaces. Just now we have calculated the dimension of the sum of the subspaces to be 3. So writing here 3 and the dimension of W1 is 2 plus the dimension of W2 is also 2 minus the dimension of their intersection so this is 3 is equal to 4 minus the dimension of intersection of the subspaces. Taking this to the other side, we get the dimension of intersection of the subspaces to be equal to 4 minus 3 that is equal to 1. 
So this is how we calculate the bases and dimension for the subspaces. Alright, thank you.